we're going to Exorcist 3. Now Exorcist 3 is kind of the... It's probably the film that beyond the first one people like the most. I mean it came out in the cinema in 1990. I mean I'm odd I've seen every Exorcist movie in the cinema. Even the Dominion one that was barely released I've seen it in the cinema. But this one I saw when it came out and it's really odd because it was hacked about by the studio and the studio didn't understand it because it was a, it was a film about um, John C. Scott basically is faced by these murders that seem to have a supernatural element that are tied to active visual exorcism because he's into a cell and finds Damien Karras in a cell, still alive, we know he died in the first one and then he's talking as if he's this guy called Gemini Killer. So it's two different people. It's basically Karras is possessed by this other person and all these murders are happening even though this guy sitting in the cell seems to be the person behind it all even though he never leaves the cell. And it's a mystery of how did it happen and how could it happen and what's going on. <coughs> and it's one of those films that the solution doesn't really matter. It's about the atmosphere. And it's it's a terrific little film actually. I mean there's tons of weird stuff. There's weird dialogue, there's weird interactions, there's dream sequences. It's much more realistic based like the first one. But there's, there's a lots of odd dialogue because when Peter Black who wrote the first one wrote and directed this one he's, he's really a comedy writer so there's lots of good jokes in it but there's also it builds and builds to this a weird mystery and George C. Scott is really big in this film he gives a large performance but it's a really good one because he's there's lots of subtleties as well and he's really seem to be enjoying himself doing this stuff and there's lots of meaty scenes with him and Brad Dourif playing the because when you, when you go into you see Karis when he goes into the viewpoint of the other character the possession the guy who's possessing Karis it switches back it switches to Brad Dourif playing this guy who was a vigil, was a vigil Gemini killer and the dialogue seems to be him and George C. Scott are brilliant they're just so subtle and there's lots of little threats and it's it's a wonderful set of sequences. I mean, so this is a film that people talk and scary. I, mean, I found this one when I saw it creepier than The Ridge of Exorcist because it tapped into elements of what's going on in your subconscious um, and weird like things you can't quite explain. So see, so you're faced with this uh, mystery you can't quite explain how it's happening but it's kind of creepy because the murders are explained rather than showing so your mind gets an image of what, what the victim looked like rather than seeing a, I know, a see, like basically a special effect. It's much more effective and you really build, about the first two thirds of the film builds and builds. There's lots of subtle things. Everything's very serious but it's, there's a really great sequence in a, in a hospital where a nurse is getting stalked. Which could be a cliche but the way they do it is really good because it's just one camera that just moves back and forward and people walk back and forward and it really delivers. So there's lots of great stuff in this film. The problem is the last third where basically because the studio didn't really get the film because it was an exorcist film without an exorcism. They brought in Nicole Williamson to play another, another priest to try and uh, exorcise Karis. And it just, it's lots of special effects, effects are nice, but the sequence doesn't work, it's against the still of the whole film, it doesn't pay off, and it leaves the film a sure taste because it's been one kind of film for two thirds and then it becomes this other thing that doesn't work. But it's still a terrific little film, I mean, the reason for why they want to possess Karis is to show this saintly priest as a murderer that would uh, depress people of faith which the Catholic, you know, the Catholic Church has managed to do that without possession and uh, basically there's lots of little ideas like that that really work and a lot of details that are brilliant so it's one of those films that should be better known than it is because it's uh, for the first two thirds is a wonderful little movie I wish they actually restore it to what it should have been because I think it would get a lot more respect if we saw what it should have been because I think the last third puts a lot of people off because it's like what the hell was that? 
and you're told that it was built to something else and you really felt the film just switch gears in a way that didn't work. So um, it's definitely worth seeing. It's a wonderful little film. I can't recommend it enough. Um, again, it's one of those things where the, the, the sequel stances are actually more interesting than the original film. The original film was just simple. And the sequels bounce off. They have to go in a different direction. They go in interesting directions. But it's but they don't have the simple connection to the audience that the first one had. So the other ones aren't su as successful. But they're more interesting to watch later because there's things you know and we don't expect.